So hi, well the Good Noise Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with Steven. Chad. Josh. <laughs> and Co from the band Dead American. And we're gonna ask him some questions. Today <laughs> we got about... it. Let's go. Yeah, uh, on the first try. <laughs> and we're gonna ask him some questions try, today baby. about their upcoming album, New Nostalgia. So congrats on that, by the way. How do you feel about the response to the announcement so far? Chad? um i think it's been cool well i think more than anything we're just relieved that this is getting released because we've we actually tracked this whole record in was it 2019 in december and then we were getting ready to release it and then COVID hit and then we're like well we should probably wait um so yeah i mean response has been good so far i think we're just me personally i'm stoked to actually get it out finally hell yeah it's a very good album. I was listening to it before this because we got the stream yes. super late. <laughs> Wait, did you get the full record or did you just? Yeah. Full album. Dang. Oh, lucky. lucky. Exclusive. All right, let's switch this interview around. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I only listened to it once, please. You. No, no, no. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even tell you the track names. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. But overall vibe, what, 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 was, your, what was your takeaway from it? album rocks especially that opener man it was heavy hitting had me head banging yeah, yeah. like out the gate heck yeah oh yeah yeah that'll be our our third single we've got a video that's coming out with that one so it'll be cool hell yeah i'm usually not a fan of heavy music shane can uh you know stand by that um but i actually really enjoyed the album i thoroughly enjoyed it it was very nice thank you of course. yeah there's definitely that's, yeah there's definitely parts that are like heavier but we definitely with this record uh take it to the other i mean not to the other extreme extreme but like definitely a variety of songs that cater to most people exactly and that's what i really liked about it you guys blended a lot of different sounds and genres together really well it's really good sweet Mm -hmm. thank you of course Uh, so is there any meaning behind the album title or cover art (laughs) <laughs> Ooh, weird weird that you should ask about that that's so <laughs> that's weird. definitely um, a cove <laughs> yeah oh weird no you know what though i feel like that oceanside house so josh chad and i used to live together in oceanside which is like 10 minutes away from where josh and i are right now um i feel like we had the name for it but we just didn't have like the what it was going to look like at that house like the whole overall vibe of the music is just extremely nostalgic to, I feel like all of us who are on that record and just like, it's really, I don't know. The, the name to, to me really goes along with it. And then as far as the Beatle, I mean, that's, I am the Beatle. <laughs> so, so you know it, it's cool like i i think our our vibe from our ep to the full length using using like like pulling from stuff that that's already been done um was just this is a nice way to kind of cap that whole that whole uh i guess like era of the band off you know i feel like what we're writing now and what we've been writing for since COVID hit, since our record's been done is like what we truly are. And I feel like this is all of the stuff that we really enjoy playing. And we're going to like go into this touring cycle and like truly find out like, okay, now we know what the fun shit is to play live. Mm-hmm. and what cracks and then it's going to be like we're only going to write that you know we're only going to run towards that in in it and i feel like i don't know everything i've been hearing so far from the newer newer stuff not even just this stuff because it's kind of hard just to like chad said we've had this stuff for two years you yeah. know brand brand new to you but to us we're like we're still hyped on it because we get to now play it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but we're artists and it's hard to stop the artists from creating. And it's, I don't know. I feel like what we're working on is going to complement all of the stuff that we're about to release on this record, which is pretty dope. So 
yeah, if you know my history, you kind of know the 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 Beatle, <laughs> the Beatle reference. And I don't know. I think it's I think it's fun. It definitely is nostalgic feeling. It represents the record title as well as all of the music that that we've created for this record. So pretty mm-hmm. pretty neat. All right. I don't know. For me, it's really neat. Very yeah. cool. Uh, so can you guys tell us a little about your writing process for this album? Um, so a lot of, well, originally the band started with just Cove and I, um, like I had a bunch of music and brought it to him. That's how this band formed. And then I just brought in all my coolest friends to play along with us because yeah. that's what you do. Love that. Um, so that was originally how the band started. So some of the songs on the new record are like carryovers of songs that we were working on originally. Um, so I just wrote most of the music for those. But then um, Josh and I wrote a song together. Now he's got a cat. <laughs> uh, we like there's probably more than half of uh, the songs on the record that everybody's kind of contributed their own part. Mm -hmm. Um, But it really, the way, and in my mind, um, there's two things. Well, I'm sure there's more things, but even if uh, (laughs) Kyle, our drummer, who's not here in this, um, or if Steve brings an idea or Josh brings an idea or anybody else, has an idea it usually gets filtered through me um and then it's like okay we need we still need this part or this part so um someone out like i don't know it's kind of a collaborative thing but like potentially could say through my filter because i kind of take everything and then put it together however much is done and then bring it to the table musically and then cove gets a hold of that um and then he just writes the vocals and then vocal wise um like lyrically and melodically it's a a big percentage cove but then every once in a while like josh will have an idea for vocals or any of us will be like hey what about this Mm -hmm. um so i think for the most part it's a collaborative um, but th- on the rare occasion, like our old uh, guitar player, Jamie, has brought a couple of songs to the table, which um, y- if you heard the record, the one that's called Vertigo, I can't remember what number it is, but like that's mostly a Jamie song. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, that's Ooh. kind of the whole process. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, Perfect. Uh, so I want you four to tell us your favorite lyric off this album and the meaning behind it. Mm. I'm interested to hear you all. <laughs> the first one that came to mind was "Guess I'm too jaded to be woke," um, but I don't. I can't tell you what it what was behind. It. I mean, I guess I probably could, but I wouldn't speak for you, Coach. I feel like that's no. funny because I. I don't know why, but jaded as a lyric or actually just as a word in general kind of like makes me laugh because it's like (laughs) I just think of all of the 90s songs that use that word. Yeah. (laughs) But but I do. I think like ironically, I do also like that lyric, but I'll think of another one if someone else wants to go. Um, in anything mm. different, there's a line that's like, as I dance across the lines of the fault. Um, I thought that was like probably one of the most clever lines that I've, that Cove to me wrote on this album, like super poetic. It's like dual meanings and kind of like yeah. strikes a chord for me, like no pun intended or whatever, but like, yeah, <laughs> like that, that whole song in general is just like all the feels, but yeah. like lyrically it's genius too. And I like super admire that. Mm-hmm. Cove, you got to mm. go. I'm still thinking. <laughs> this one's tough for me. Cause there's, there's two ways to go about it. There's like the angry version. And then there's like the, the, the kind of point that Josh brought out where it's like, 
I don't know. That's one of my favorite lines. I remember like on, I wrote that line, like a balancing act on Fred's wall, like where his grass like uh, ran cool. out. And I like jump, I was doing a little balancing act, listening to that song, walking back towards the, the, the garage. And when I jumped off, I was like, oh, don't jump on the crack in my head. And I was like, oh, that could be like a fault line. And that's how that thing came about. That's, I don't know. It was a, it was, it was a dual, like a dual thing too, which is really cool. Um, or has dual meaning, at least to me, which I'm not going to get into the other one, but uh, <laughs> I feel like Bridge of Lost really like mm emotional for me because it's it's just one of those like i don't know what happens when we die you know mm -hmm. like i fucking wish i knew and it's it's one of those like like you're like suspended in in your beliefs you know like i want to believe that i go there mm -hmm. but i just don't know mm -hmm. So it's one of those kind of moments where it's very honest with me. Like, like that's me, like, ex, ex, like saying something honest. And, and I think there's a lot of those moments across the record. Um, but the more I listen to this record now, like today, I think that's what I would have said, like after the record was done. Mm -hmm. But if you ask me it today, I feel like, um, like a song like Vertigo, a song like, um, what what did uh, what did Randy become? Uh, <laughs> Deceivers. Deceivers. Yeah, Deceivers. I feel like that song just it, it like somehow grew up in in the time that COVID hit. It's really it's taken on a lot more meaning. Like, I feel like when people hear this record, there was, there was a guy who left a comment. I don't know if any of you guys saw it, but he was like, he was like, oh, they went full Joe Rogan rock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, on our, like, on our shit. And I laughed for, like, like, two hours at that comment. And every now and then, I'll just think about that and laugh. Put it on just a t-shirt. Like, God dang it. God Joe dang. Rogan. I know. We need to. Just Joe Rogan rock, dead American. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, but I thought about that and I was just like, you know what? It's it's really funny. It's funny how I can write something and how we can write something and be a part of something that was like pre-COVID. Nobody even knew what a COVID was. Mm. And then like now we're like supposed to be coming out of it. And like when I feel like when people hear this record, they're gonna be like, Oh damn, he must be this way. And it's going to be a whole lot of explaining where it's like. <laughs> it wasn't even about any It of wasn't that. even like it, yeah. intentional. It wasn't intentional. It just like it just grew up, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. and, and it's it's nice because Chad and I, when we started this band, it was a fuck you band. Like everything was just middle fingers up and mm -hmm. fuck you, you know, the whole time set it to 11. And I think we kind of still kept that even on this record. Um, and even on some of the, the slower songs, you know, uh, or the more like um, not heavy songs, we still kind of kept that attitude where it's like, fuck and fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah I, um, I think Deceivers would be my like jam now. Mm -hmm. um, just the the whole political thing that's happened has put division in and it and it i think it affects us more than we actually like understand like you find your clique of friends and i can guarantee you, you probably all think similarly politically yeah you know you just kind of fall into that but it's one of those things where we're being like treated a certain way where we're supposed to hate each other and that to me is such bullshit 
And I don't know. I feel like it's kind of a, a, a lie that we've been sold. Not, not, not COVID, mm -hmm. but just like, <laughs> <laughs> but just like the whole fucking political game, you know, it's well just, said. it's all, it's all bullshit. And that, that me being able to say that finally is kind of like on a record mm -hmm. is, is kind of freeing. So who knows if I'll say it again, but Fair enough. I don't know. Yeah, right. that rec that song is my jam okay. chad favorite lyric oh i still didn't think of one but i did think what? of how i was impressed <laughs> i was impressed scared. that uh you fit what, what's the word acquiesce oh, oh acqui yeah acquiesce he yeah. yeah like who even <laughs> says that i didn't even know that was a word never heard of it until today yeah, yeah. but yeah I don't know. I'm, I'm, what's funny? Well, I guess it's not that funny, but, um, I've never really been like when I listen to music, I've never really been like, let me see what this is about. And I don't know. I've been more driven to, to music or like instrumental parts of music than lyrically and melodically. I do like get drawn to like if a melody is like interesting but i've never been a words guy which is why i think this works so well because i heavily focus on the music and then everybody else really helps and like finish yeah. it with the words and stuff so there's like two hyper focuses and then when they come together i think it fits really well so. Oh yeah. All right. Oh. We'll 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 let it we'll let it pass. You know, <laughs> I'll keep thinking as we're talking. If I think hey, I rambled for like ten minutes. Cole right did there. answer you it got, for like everyone. Gems. <laughs> you got gems in that. <laughs> uh, so how did the track list for the album come about? Did you guys write the opener be the opener, or closer be a closer? Did you guys just shuffle it around, see what fits? What was the process like for that? <laughs> I, yeah if i could guess like definitely after we had all the songs and like uh, like like a pool of all the songs there were definitely a couple that stood out like this is definitely going to be the closer and this is like definitely going to be the opener and then everything in between i feel like um was kind of thought about afterwards but um yeah you guys can kind of talk about the ones in the middle I know the only thing I'll say is I know for sure, like as soon as I, as uh, the closing track, um, what is it called? Hook, line and sinker. Hook, line, sinker. Yeah. Okay. I remember them by the demo name. So it's Dream, hard to like, Dream on. yeah, I Dream. Dream on, whatever. When that first, when that song was first coming together i listened back like pretty early on i think i only had the intro maybe the first chorus written with the music and i was like this sounds like the final track and that was before like even i was done with my parts of the song but even afterwards with every, like how it came out i was like yeah that's probably the right choice so and then the first track was I mean, yeah, you got to right, you even, gotta come in strong with the first track. Definitely. Um, but yeah, the middle, I don't know how the middle, we kind of like tried to evenly to, space out like heavy song, heavy song, not so heavy, like kind of bounce back and forth. We actually did um, consider doing this whole album completely differently where we were going to call it doom and gloom and doom was going to be all the heavy stuff. Mm -hmm. And then gloom yeah. was gonna be all the like softer stuff. Damn, and, I forgot about that idea. I did too until <laughs> just right now. Um, <laughs> Hell but, yeah. I mean, maybe we'll bring that idea back at some point, but mm -hmm. instead of trying to separate it where it's like, you don't really want to get two different feels from two sides of a record. So why don't you just put it together and call it something that over like 
overshadows everything rather than separating them because then you put yourself into this weird category of like well they have this side of them and this side of them and they are making it a point to show that Mm -hmm. whereas now it's like all mixed together and it's like okay that just shows variety rather than we're either this or this yeah Mm -hmm. makes sense sure all right Uh, so could you tell us where your headspace is at while you're creating this album you expect me to remember that long ago (laughs) get out of here yeah i feel like i feel like when (laughs) when we started i mean this album was like being written over how many years like like quite a few years leading up to going into the studio too so it's like yeah i don't know i feel like it was like the wandering vibe, you know, mm-hmm. where we yeah. were all trying to figure it out and like just doing what felt right in the moment, like musically. And then we kind of like we all put our pieces together that were like incepted by different people during that time of like figuring out what our band was after we all came together. Cause the EP was just chatting cove. And then when like then we put together a band of like you know, five different dudes with all different styles. And Mm -hmm. we all kind of started incepting like these diff, like our own sounds during that period. And then like Chad said, they would get filtered through him and kind of refined into a more um, like cohesive sound across everything. But yeah, I don't know if you guys want to piggyback off of that. Yeah, I, uh, I think really like there was never any pressure to be like this is what it needs to sound like this is what we're doing it literally anytime music comes along it's like all right i'm sitting down or any of us are sitting out down and it's like okay what do we want to write so all of these i think that's part of why there's such a variety because i mean Mm -hmm. i don't write well someone someone could argue and actually analyze some of my songs and be like this is basically the same song just sounds different but a lot of my like what i listen to is not the same thing like genre what genre wise like and everybody says that but it's like you could literally put on anything and if there's something of like interesting about it like I could get into it. Mm. Um, so I think that comes through on the, the what's about to come out and what we're still writing. Um, Cause it's like, there's no, we're not, we don't want to be put in a box as far as like, this is what our sound is. Mm-hmm. Um, but mainly I think I have too much ADD and <laughs> <can't>, like, <laughs> write things that sound similar. And I'm like, I like this, this sounds cool. This is a totally different sound. It also sounds cool. Why not put it, on the same record fair enough okay um so how do you guys recommend your fans to listen to this album for the first time should they do it in the car with friends in the dark with headphones on is it a party album workout album what do you guys personally recommend back front to back front to back just listen to it front to back i don't care where the fuck you listen to it at just listen to it front to back okay like there's something there's something on this record for everything i feel like with it's with the amount of like time that went into this record and to kind of like go back to the last question it's like we put like however many years of life that we've been living you know on this planet up until the time that like that idea came out like that's what went into this Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like and even even with the vocals and like what we're saying it's like just years of like pent up things that have been needed to say or like just some like things inside of us that like needed to come out and i feel like that's that's what as far as like what, what was the question that you had for this <laughs> I was just about I'm, I'm going i'm going question. <laughs> yeah it was, um how um, to listen to the record oh yeah, for the yeah. first time record. yeah yeah <laughs> Like with the amount of work that just we put into the record itself, it's like we put into, yes, there was track one. Yes, there was track 12, but like all that stuff in the middle is, is 
just feels and it's it's yes like we created these songs just to be perfect songs but when we set them up side by side like we definitely listened to so many different versions of like orders to -hmm. get to the one that we we are at now because we wanted it to feel a certain way Mm -hmm. once you started it so once you ended it you were like you go on a fucking journey with us you know, there's, there's highs, there's lows. There's like, there's moments where you want to punch a wall and there's moments that you like want to break down and cry, Mm -hmm. you know? And that's like, that's the emotional journey that all of us have been on to create what it is that we created on this record. Like to do what we did best, we had to live all of those experiences. And I feel like all those experiences and feelings and emotions came out on this record. So if you listen to it from front to back, like, yeah, like the time in our lives and the order in which the, it, it happened will be, will be like different, but it will take you to, to moments that you will have like, you will like recall memories, I feel like. You It'll know, answer that's, your headspace question. Yeah. About yeah. Had- you honestly answered like three questions in one. Yeah. Sorry, the headspace. No, you're, you're, you're and the, and Sorry, the one we just asked. So I think, perfect. You know, I think sometimes you're... I drop gems, guys. <laughs> I give you gems. I feel like too. Like I don't know if it's just me and this is my personality, but like I feel like the first time that knowing what it is and trying to tell someone, hey, you should listen to this record. I feel like I'd be like. I, th- I feel like in my mind, it's like, go put some good headphones on or a good system <laughs> and just sit by yourself, but also for sure do front to back. Mm-hmm. Um, and then once you get through it, you'll, I mean, if you want to share it with someone, I think it's a, like, it's pretty introspective. So it's like, I think it's more personal than a, than it is like a party, like throw it on at a party but there are songs that you could throw on and be like, oh, that's sick at a party. But yeah. I think to get the full feeling, like you have to, you kind of have to go in and analyze it a little bit and kind of ask yourself questions about like what's being said and how you're feeling, because it really does like, what did you say? It's a journey. I feel like mm-hmm. most, yeah. most of the songs are a journey but even bigger than that, like the full record from front to back is a journey. Mm. For sure. Well said, guys. Perfect. Uh, so this one should be super, super quick. Off the top of your heads, I want you guys to describe mm-hmm. this album for new listeners in three words. No more, no less. Three words each. Really fucking awesome. Hell yeah. There you go. We got one. Damn, son. <laughs> Done. See you. Oh. Later. <laughs> Bye, that? Cove. <laughs> I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Bye. <laughs> uh, the only the only thing I can think of is turn it up. Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I love it. If I can include myself in this question, Joe Rogan Rock. Yeah. <laughs> Dang, you stole mine. Joe <laughs> 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 <Go> Rogan Rock. <laughs> Dang, oh that was God. the best one. Yeah, I think that's how it just needs to end. You yeah. know? <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm not gonna be able to think of anything better than that. <laughs> oh, you win. Oh <laughs> sorry. We're waiting. Oh, we're God. waiting. Oh, don't wait. Yeah, I don't right, go going. <laughs> for, me, for me, though, like this, this record's like real music again. And that, like, I guess nostalgia part of it helps out. But it's like, I've been so bored of rock music over the last five plus years, maybe 10 mm-hmm. years, and the way that things are produced now, where it's like, it's not capturing performances. It's not, it's just like sitting at a computer and making whatever sounds big or sounds heavy and just like having like the wow factor about that without there being substance Mm -hmm. but with this like i don't know this record is like real music again to me 
So that's so, your three words. Real, real music, music again. again. It's your three words. <laughs> no. hey, you song. know what? I, you know what I love? Song. It's actual song. <laughs> about that too is that that is coming from a guy who wasn't in the studio with us and that full is freaking firing shots right now <laughs> bang, 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 bang. Yeah. <laughs> you got the freaking bfg out son in this interview i love it i love, love it, it. <laughs> josh we're not moving on until you answer the question oh, come on. <laughs> Three blind Into the <laughs> oh. um <laughs> Let me think here. Come on. Dang, I got one for you. Check this out. It, it goes by the Sounds the like muscles. Pun. Okay. <laughs> there you go. There we go. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was so... gonna throw B D E out there to you, Josh. Just so oh, no. throw there that one. <laughs> uh so in that same train of thought, is there a certain feeling you want listeners to have while going through the album? I feel like just be open and take it all in because it's yeah. A, yeah it's just a journey like you you're you definitely don't know there's a few points in the record where you're like i think i know what's about to come next and then the next song comes on you're like where did this come from yeah so just be open-minded i think and we, yeah we take you on a gondola ride on this freaking <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> take right. you with a gondola ride. Love that. Yeah, it. You guys can go back and listen to the song, and when people come out, I feel like it'll come out. But I'll say the song title afterwards, so we don't say it on this interview. It's fine. But you should know. To go. And... Oh yeah, it's true. Yeah. Oh yeah. And by yeah. the time this interview it... comes out, the album will probably be either super close to coming out or already out. So mm-hmm. also, okay, this if is you good. go on to Spotify or Apple Music, I think you can see what the track listing is. Yeah. But yeah. you just can't yeah. play. It. Yeah. Hmm. I think I think it's like track ten. It's called "Just Let Go," and it's it's a freaking gondola ride. The whole time we were writing this, <laughs> thing, I'm like, man. I'm freaking singing to two people just cruising right now. Yeah. In, a, in a striped shirt and a bonnet. Hell or yeah. <laughs> One of those mm-hmm. flat hats with the yeah, freaking yeah. sides. Dude. I see Dang. it. I see it. Dang, I'd have to shave for that. I'd have to like <laughs> do something spicy with this. Yeah. All right. Uh, so what is your favorite memory that you made while creating this album? When it was done. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> oh i don't know i i think like in the moment it was just a like the coolest opportunity to be able to bring us like my closest friends and now my new closest friends um into a space and have it like this was I've definitely like I've done other records with other bands but like this was the first one where it was like kind of on well I just had put a lot into this Mm -hmm. and to see it like coming to life with the the coolest people that I could have around me other than Steve because he wasn't there (laughs) yet but he was there in spirit exactly um I don't know it was I think that was probably the coolest thing was just like being able to have everyone have like take ownership of their parts of the record and have it come together better than if I had done it myself. That's very wholesome. Yeah. I like That's that. Very wholesome. Yeah, I love that. Um, so picture this, you're on tour, you're at a gas station for a rest stop. What is your snack of choice? Uh, uh, I feel like his is Hot pickles. Hot yeah. pickles Hot taste. Pickles. Yeah, okay. I almost died. Of one. Or I, I bought a lot of Lunchables on the last tour. You did buy a lot Ooh. of Lunchables. Or like salami cheese. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Wait, we're talking snacks? Yep. Yeah, snacks. Mm. We, we do this even while we're not on tour. <laughs> <laughs> Gas station really quick. What do you yeah, want? we actually did that last, last, night? last night. Yeah. yeah. Sick. I mean, what those fried that? burritos in the middle of Ooh. nowhere, Idaho, are the, pretty much the best thing. If was that were yeah, at every that was... gas station? I would get those at every gas station. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, There's too many. <laughs> just any. Okay. Wait. We gotta say this. Anything, little, little Debbie. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
if yes. they have it at a gas station, which I have seen, but that's our Will life. Debbie give us a sponsorship? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, we need to make a little Debbie t shirt. Yeah, Lil Dabby. <laughs> Dabby. <laughs> yes. Cove. I know you said there are a lot of options. Can you pick just there's one just, or two? There's just too many. I'll uh, tell you what yeah. he usually comes home with. It's Hell Dr. Yeah. Pepper, Dr. Tall Pepper. Hell yeah. Dr. Pepper Tallboy. <laughs> at least one, if not two. Um... I feel like there's always something chocolate. You bring home chocolate a lot. Yeah, chocolate, Reese's, mm -hmm. and Reese's, anything Reese's, Yeah, and Haribo, anything Haribo. There you go. All right. Yep. There we go. They're, they're yeah. perfect. Yeah. So I'm a on fiend. The As you should be. Uh, so on the topic of food, if the band was a dish, what dish would the band be? Oh, no. A burrito. Oh, beef, 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 beef Wellington. Beef Wellington. Beef Wellington. <laughs> <laughs> Thanksgiving third round. No, Dan Burrito for sure. Dan Burrito. Oh, yeah, Dan that's Burino. actually true. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say hot dog just because of what we did recently, <laughs> but <laughs> for those who don't know, no, <laughs> we're not going to explain with that. A taquito in it. Yeah, so mm. you got to go to a good Mexican food place. Get a big bean and cheese burrito and also order rolled tacos or taquitos or taquitos, however anybody says it. Um, <laughs> open up the burrito, stick the two um, rolled tacos into the burrito with guac and cheese. Also, you got to drizzle the green sauce because that's, mm -hmm. the, that's the secret sauce. Mm -hmm. um, fold it back up. Yeah, that's... If, if dead American was up to that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wow. Uh, so for these last couple of questions, we're going to shift away from music and go straight to death row. Boom. So if you're on death row, what would your last meal be with a drink? Probably that burrito and a red pepper. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. uh, yeah, Dr. Pepper for sure is my meal, or is my drink. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think I'd be right there with you. Just give me a gallon of like green salsa so I can just <laughs> drink that. Wait, that's your drink? Just no, that's no, no, no. I mean, salsa with, with, with the meal, with the meal. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. With the oh, Dan Barino, for sure. No, just I need a lot of salsa, Dr. Pepper, and yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I think a I'd be coffee. All of those. And a piece of toast with no butter or anything on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, hard, hard, it's so hard, sad. Hard. It's just bread. It's just hot bread. No, but wait, yeah. Do we have dessert in bread, this yeah. meal too? I mean, there you needs can. to be dessert. Okay, ego. You take a chocolate chip, oh, yeah. right? <laughs> and then you take cookie butter and you put it on it, and then you take wait, another cookie ego. butter. Yeah, you're yeah, doing, doing this wrong. Cookie butter yet? No. Sh I'm doing it my way. Okay. I'm doing it the fattest of kids' way, okay? Then you take another one. Okay. And then you take the chocolate chip ego that's toasted and you stick it on. And mm -hmm. then you take more cookie butter. Mm -hmm. And then you take your favorite scoop of ice cream. Steve's definitely cookies and cream. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Fruity Mine, pebble ice cream. Fruity mm. pebble ice cream. Or the freaking Flintstones uh, chocolate chip, the the fuck, what was that Co one called? The cocoa, the cocoa pebble, the cocoa one. Pe the cocoa pebble yeah. one. Yeah, that yeah. one slaps too. Take that. You put magic shell on it, and then, <laughs> and that goes on top of the the egos. This sounds yeah. like chaos. Then you get like a berry syrup, and you drizzle it over the top, so that way you at least have some egos with some some syrups. Man. Okay. I could that go sounds, for one of those that right sounds now. Really good. That sounds like a heart yeah. attack waiting to happen. Hey, can we make one of those when I get home? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, okay. Fruit, fruit, fruit pebble ice cream, cream and cookie butter, though? Uh, yeah, that's yeah. a little. Yeah. That sounds, <laughs> it's slaps, called diabetes. <laughs> diabetes. <laughs> We're trying real hard. Steven, food, drink. You're dying tomorrow. Yeah. What well, I mean, eating? you're dying tomorrow, so you might as well. Yeah. Be, yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, in addition to that, I'd also just have just 
uh, cookies and cream ice cream, but in a glass glass, mm -hmm. like a like a Ooh. tumbler, mm -hmm. um, like a short glass, like yeah, like a short glass that you'd have like a cocktail in, um, and then just chicken tikka masala, extra spicy. <sighs> So yeah. I, I want to go out with the spiciest bowl. With an actual yeah. band. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey. Steve, we're on the same level. Give me the gallon of salsa. Yeah. Go. Going out with the spicy butthole. <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> I love that. Just me and you, two little spicy girls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, spicy girl. Oh, fucking, dang. Fucking hell. Josh, did you go? Yeah, he said hot bread. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, yeah I'm bread. sorry. I thought it was a joke. Coffee. <laughs> okay, perfect. Perfect. Uh, so, if you could live in one uh, fictional world for a week, where would you live? Uh, oh. <clears throat> the, the Instagram algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very yeah. good. No. <laughs> Dang. I feel well, it's kind of not fictional, but like the Peaky Blinders era of time. Well, I yeah. guess it's fictional because the the show is fictional, but like yeah. That's I literally would, my yeah. answer. Really? Mm -hmm. I say it every time, yeah. Heck yeah. I'd probably be in Willy Wonka's factory. Oh, that'd be so cool. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's a better answer. Like I could go. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you could Rick get and Morty. All the <laughs> yeah. Josh, did you and say Rick and Morty? And the COVID, the COVID would be in Rick and Morty. Okay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel yeah. like I feel like okay. So my mom watches these like the other. They're like foreign films, mm -hmm. and she got really like balls deep into Bollywood. Oh, <laughs> you Bollywood. Know what that uh -huh. is. Yeah. So like bits and pieces of this whole world and i feel like it's like hollywood but it's not hollywood because it's bollywood mm -hmm. it's like they got like these bright ass dresses and stuff and they do dances and it doesn't make any sense to me but what you're saying is you want to wear a bright dress i i want to wear something bright and fancy too you know what i mean yeah okay. all right okay i don't know <laughs> feel like that that's like a whole different world that i don't know about and so mm -hmm. being thrust into the unknown which is probably why rick and morty would be funny too mm -hmm. but that would just that would just be so much more like <laughs> for sure adventure time for me okay oh yeah Ooh. yeah all right <gasps> Why do you boo of Adventure Time? No, I said, ooh. Oh, I was like, <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, okay. Hell no. We're good. We're good. Oh, no. We all love Adventure Time. Hell yeah. yeah. Have, you, have you guys seen uh, the other series they did, the uh, Midnight Gospel stuff? No, no. You should check it out. If you like, well, it's not really like Adventure Time, mm -hmm. but it, the same, I don't remember what it is, like the same people. Like animators? Um, yeah. Yeah. potentially that maybe writers as well mm -hmm. um but it's like a completely different story but it's like it's pretty it's pretty deep but it's like a kid's show okay. interesting okay yeah. i'll check it out yeah. interesting Dr. for kids yeah um so i've done i've asked the last question and every single person we've spoken to have said that is the most important question what's your favorite color black gray Yellow. Green. Yellow. Uh, All right. We have a whole rainbow of sad colors. Yeah. <laughs> um, so as I said, that's all the questions we have today. Is there anything that you guys would like to plug? Oh, uh, you know, just our record coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Record New tour. Nostalgia, February 11th. Uh, we're going on the road uh, with scary kids scaring kids drugs and secrets and us uh it's uh the tour is called the velocity tour that is our uh the label that we're on label that starts the 16th of february it's nationwide 
Um, come hang out with us, both of you also, but also everyone who's going to watch this. Um, anybody got like a like a modeling account you want to talk about? That? <laughs> Ooh, no, just bring us little Debbies on the tour. Awesome. Little Debbies. Okay, noted. Bring us little noted. Debbies. That out. Mm -hmm. All right. That'd be tight. Um, All right. Well, thank Shout you. Shout out to Larry. Make Larry famous. Yeah, famous Larry. All right. Uh, well, thank you for now. This guy's been Dead American, and we have been the Good Noise Podcast.